A great music critic once said of Mozart's music that its true genius lay in three facts. First, that while the musical forms of the time were established and relatively rigid, Mozart knew how to bend those rules in subtle but incredible ways. Second, that everything is about variety. Nothing ever repeats and things are always changing in subtle ways so the listener is always full of delight and never boredom. Third, that what people initially perceive as simplicity belies an incredible depth and complexity that is just beneath the surface. What in the world does this have to do with The Curse of Monkey Island, the third installment in the legendary Monkey Island series of adventure games? I will argue that in deftly utilizing these three skills, Jonathan Ackley, Larry Ahern, and team not only created a title that overall is one of the greatest games of all time, but in particular that they allow me to argue that this game's second of six parts is the single greatest hour of video gameplay ever made. Okay, it's slightly over an hour, but you get my point. Let me give you all the background information you need as briefly as possible. In this game, you are Guybrush Threefoot, a lovable wannabe mighty pirate and partner in crime with your love, Governor Elaine Marley. A zombie pirate, LeChuck, is the antagonist of the story and loves both Elaine and Power. In the first part of the story, we enjoy a few lovely cutscenes that set the scene of Guybrush adrift at sea, soon captured by a ship full of pirates. After meeting a friend from a previous game, you're immediately introduced to the game's clever interface and given a few puzzles to warm up. In adventure games like this, the classic convention is you go from scene to scene, often backtracking, to either find environmental objects or people to interact with, or to combine objects to achieve outcomes and progress the plot. The additional Monkey Island lair is the series is known for quite unconventional humor and deep dialogue trees that are often there just for the fun of it and to see what funny interactions you can have with people or things. Eventually, you find the demonic skull Murray, a highlight of the series, who has been left the talking head and knock him into the water. You enter the ship's treasure hole, find the diamond ring that you used to cut a porthole, escape the ship and find yourself on land. Guybrush proposes to Elaine and puts the ring on her finger, finding out it is cursed as, enraged, she turns into a solid gold statue. And here our part two begins. Let's establish some of the foundations first for this game. Michael Land, the amazing composer for all the Monkey Island games, is back with an incredible score that sets the right mood at every turn. This was the first Monkey Island game on CD, allowing for a full score and voice acting. We are listening to a score for the game throughout this video, in fact, you're listening to it right now. The LucasArts art team killed it in this game, especially Bill Tiller, who established the gorgeous, timeless, cartoon cell animation look of the game, including amazing backgrounds and characters. The gameplay featured a mega monkey mode for even harder puzzles, which was much appreciated. And I really liked the new adaptation of the scum system in the form of a pop-up gold coin with icons in an inventory chest. Part 2 of Curse of Monkey Island alternates between an absurd 21 locations, one more interesting, well animated, and full of things to see than the next. There is the beach, across from a fort where you start, the swamp outside of Voodoo Lady's house, the house itself, the overworld map of Plunder Island, the center of Porto Poyo, which is so large it is split into three segments you walk across, but I'll count it as one, the inside of a barber shop, the backstage, onstage, and upstairs of a theater, which is three, the inside of a fast food chicken restaurant, the field of honor where you have a duel and a reverse view where you do certain activities, I'll count that as two, a snake cliff, a pit of quicksand, danger cove, a pirate ship, the deck of the pirate ship, the inside of the pirate ship, a cabana, the beach next to the cabana, and the deck of your pirate ship which starts part three of the story. 21 locations, and really 23 if you count how wide the main shot of Porto Poyo is. 23 locations in one hour of gameplay. On top of this, there is not one, but two fully animated cutscenes that would look exquisite even if presented in 2022. Let's talk characters. We have Guybrush, Elaine, LeChuck, Murray the Skeleton, the Voodoo Lady, the Pirate Barbers Haggis McMutton, Edward Van Helgen, and Cutthroat Bill who eventually join your crew, your main antagonist of the next part of the story, Captain Rene Ruttingham, Kenny Foulmouth, a young lemonade seller, Slappy Cromwell and another pirate who are wannabe thespians, Acting Agent Palito Domingo, a cabana boy, Captain Blondebeard of Blondebeard's Chicken Shop, first mate of a pirate ship Mr. Fossey, Captain LeChimp on the pirate ship, a giant pirate eating snake, and two pirates who were captured by LeChuck. I won't count the snake. That's 18 characters, again, in one hour of gameplay. Let's talk about the script. Just part two of the Curse of Monkey Island script is 20,000 words long. That's 40 pages of single-spaced, 12-point text. The beautifully absurd dialogue covers everything from talking in Spanish as a giant chicken, to loud and soft exclamations, to lengthy speeches about nothing, to mock Shakespearean dialogue. As much as any script for any game I've ever played, this game is worth the price of admission just to sit there and click through every line of every dialogue tree with every character, and even every line of dialogue and just interacting with the environment and objects, and I've done it. I've listened to all of them. 
In many cases, hearing these little gems, the further you go into the dialogue tree, is as much of a joy or even more than the main dialogue itself. Let's talk about the voice acting. This was before the special editions, so many forget this was the first time Monkey Island was ever voice acted. All the sounds we have in our ears across the series since then, from Dominic Armado as Guybrush, to Alexandra Boyd as Elaine Marley, to Earl Bowen as LeChuck, to Denny Delk as many voices including Murray, all started right here and were brilliantly cast. Okay, you might say, this is all fine and good of me. Backgrounds, characters, voice acting, music. What about the actual gameplay and memorable moments? Okay, I'll talk about that. The gameplay here is all about creativity and variety. Unbelievable variety. I won't hit every single puzzle, but I will cover all the highlights. The real magic of an adventure game for me is not just the puzzles, but how the game has trust in itself to know when to pull back and just let you enjoy the scenery or the dialogue. You have to give players space, which is much appreciated and done well in this game. As we open the act, the game gives you some classic adventure game environmental gimmies. You pick up some embers on the ground, you pick up a voodoo pin and paste in the voodoo lady's house. In between this, it paces beautifully, giving you time to talk to Murray the skeleton on the way in, and to her once you're in the house. This is a great character contrast pairing, putting them in sequence. You are led over to town, walking past the lemonade stand, and given the chance to talk to Kenny, a bratty kid. The game nicely teases all the locations you could go to eventually, but also doesn't open up the whole map yet. When you enter the theater, you see a magic wand and book on ventriloquism. Once again, variety. This ventriloquism book becomes a whole subgame of its own, as you can use it across tons of instances on all characters to hear them say all sorts of absurd things. You can have similar fun with the wand. Now the game starts to step up the puzzles, pushing you to do multiple interactions, as if you don't click on the coat in the theater twice for example, you won't be able to pick up the lice you need for a later puzzle. The game, again smart on spacing, pairs this slightly elevated puzzle with the hilarious faux Shakespearean interactions with Slappy Cromwell. This game is all about balance in the hands of masters that are crapped. Next you go to the Barbary Coast, a barber shop with three pirates. I could make an entire 15 minute video just on all the pop culture, literature, film, music, and even references to other games and Monkey Island games that this game makes. Just believe me that it's super clever and you can find many videos on how well written it is and you'll find a lot of that in this barber shop. The barber shop sets up a loving tribute to the original Monkey Island game, a similar three trials like adventure with a crew to win over but with a fresh take. These are three asymmetric challenges in which you must win a duel, find treasure and show your strength. All three are memorable. The duel with one pirate ends in a musical puzzle as you try to outplay each other on the banjo, one of the most memorable highlights of the entire game. A second has you solving an incredibly complex multi-part puzzle in which you get a gold tooth out of a chicken shop by encasing it in gum. The third involves you replacing a tree in a bluff with a rubber tree. The solutions to each puzzle are unique and showcase unrelenting variety in adventure puzzle archetypes as well as types of gameplay. Another highlight is when you go to a hill later overlooking Danger Cove. A snake eats you. This is a huge tribute to one of the most famous scenes in Secret of Monkey Island, where Guybrush, who is famous in the series for being able to hold his breath for 10 minutes, is stuck underwater with all kinds of things that could save him just out of reach. In Curse, you get a double dose of this, both with tons of random hilarious things inside a snake that swallows you, from Fabergé eggs to vacuum cleaner attachments, and then being launched into quicksand, you must somehow escape. The way the game doubles down on this from the original game is so clever. Another highlight. When you come back to town later, you live a myth of a famed El Pollo Diablo, a large human-sized chicken that has terrorized the local town by covering yourself in tar and feathers. Well, rather, they cover you in tar and feathers, but I won't give away how that happens. It is just very funny, and I don't want to give any more away, and is as ridiculous as it sounds. The gameplay sequence that leads to this in the script is very memorable and quotable. In an amazing twist of past Monkey Island games that often have you finding a map, in this game, you pinch your map by, ugh, burning it off the back of Palito Domingo, a talent agent, by covering him with cooking oil. It's nasty, but so hilarious and aware of the past humor of the series. Finally, as if the game had not already delivered a masterclass on every possible type of puzzle or interaction in an adventure game, in a single one hour part, it also provides an old school Sierra Westwood puzzle by having you use the directions you find in the map on a spotlight to locate the treasure, which actually was on the stage of the terrible theater all along. And I haven't even mentioned all the puzzles in this part of the game, not by a long shot, but you get a flavor of it. All of this in one hour of gameplay. And as mentioned, I'm describing to you just one part of six parts that are in this magnificent game. All of them are incredible, with part two happening to be my favorite and the most concentrated in greatness, although I believe part four is pretty close behind. I hope I made an earnest case that you enjoyed of why part two of The Curse of Monkey Island could be the greatest hour of video gameplay ever made, and there are many worthy contenders. Thanks for watching, and well done, Jonathan Ackley, Larry Ahern, and the LucasArts team. To everybody, please play all the Monkey Island games. And to the Return to Monkey Island team, Take your time and make it great, even though I can't wait. Bye everybody and three sheets to the wind.